One, two, go. go. Right, I'm live. I'm live. There we go. I think I'm live as well. Boys, can you see me? Yeah. I hope you liked our new gorilla. I've got 180 people watching on my end uh, at the moment. Putting gorilla on there. Let me check how many we got our end. Oh, uh, yeah, three and a half thousand. So many. <laughs> Let's have a look. Awesome. Yeah, we're on. All right. Welcome, Mr. Waffle. Hello. Um, I just want to give a little introduction to my audience as well, because obviously we're doing a stream on both of our sides. So for anyone who doesn't know, um, this is the CEO of Testosterone, um, also known as Jack um, or Mr. Test. He's also been asked. He's also asked me to call him um, who just to give a little bit of background of what or what I've seen as an outsider, just like anyone else who's watching the stream at the moment. Um, I think um, you're a like rising star uh, of the Red Bill community. Like you've only just started your channel about two, three, four months ago, and you've already like risen the ranks quite quickly. You've got like fifty thousand subscribers or something around that level. Last time I checked, uh, you've done a couple uh, cold approach um, videos with Hamza. Um, both of you were going at it, um, and you've. Um, just by, been making content all around sort of self improvements. There's some gym stuff. There's a lot of like dating stuff, first dates, uh, you know, things like that. I've I've had a little browse of your stuff. I probably watched uh, about five to ten of your videos so far. Uh, so I have like a little bit of uh, understanding where you're coming from. So do you think what I've just summarised you as there is a worthy introduction? Mate, yeah, I think that's yeah, that's totally fair enough. How did you find the like? How did you find the channel? What what are you currently thinking about CEO of testosterone? Well, I saw you on um, what was it the first man? I, I, that's the first time I saw your face. I saw you on some first man video, um, yeah. And then I had a quick look at your content, um, like from there. And then Hamza was the one who actually suggested for us to to have a debate together. Um, and when you you was you actually like propose that to me like he suggested it to you and then you proposed it to me um and i was a little bit intrigued at that point because most people when they ask uh for a collaboration you know like a live stream of some sort they say a discussion but um you came with the big the big d word the stronger d word uh debate so i'm hoping or at least guessing you've got some um outlandish claims or sort of things that you want to contest with me in in, in this stream um and i'm looking forward to it i'm happy to defend any positions um that you know that, that i've said in my videos that you have contentions with yeah i think that's fair and i think for me first of all i want to understand you to make sure that like, i'm not making any outlandish claims and i'll give you my opinion of you and what i've i've currently seen and also ask you a few questions to understand what your actual <coughs> views are um, so to anyone on my channel that doesn't know, from what I've seen, Wheat Waffles is like a, a male self-development channel that's not fully but more tailored towards something called Black Pill, which as far as I know is to do with a man's looks as like the maximum, the, the best thing he can focus on or the thing that decides the most for him. It, is that about right? Is that what Black Pill is, Mr. Waffles? Um, it stands for three things in my opinion. So number one is that women only date up number two is the importance of looks and number three is that your looks are mainly genetic so like that's that's the simplest way of um like you know describing the black pill in my opinion um if you don't believe in those three things and all of those three things then you're not black pilled you are something else and i did have okay. a little scroll through your content i watched one video in particular uh, which I hope we'll get to because I did have a disagreement with you on it. It was the any man can go from a three out of three out of ten to an eight out of ten, and I actually used that in the thumbnail of this video. So hopefully we'll get to that in the future. That, but I'll let that. you respond to um, you know what I said originally. Hundred percent, and I think uh, that's good to know what black pill is. What would you say red pill is? Because I don't know too much about the pills. I'm fairly new to all the pills. I've just been saying sort of my life experiences. What is red pill as far as you see it? Why would I be sort of a red pill YouTuber? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I do want to apologise for calling you a red pill rising star at the start because if if you don't actually like subscribe to that, then that's fair enough. But I guess most people on watching your content, the things that you preach, like you might not know it yet, but you are, you know, basically like teaching red pill ideas. It's the, you know, whole sort of in. It, it's a very broad thing. It's broader than black pill, in my opinion. 
and um okay. there are there actually is quite a lot of uh, like disagreements within the red pill community in itself um but the, there's three main sort of uh red pill like ideologies in my opinion there's ones that mainly focus on just game um like these are like the pickup artists uh, dating coaches and um they they reject the first uh pillar that i said about about women dating up they think that a guy if he's only like a five out of ten across the board he can get a um you know eight out of ten if he's got very good game um you know through doing something like cold approach or like using his online dating profile correctly so that's like the first group i don't think you're really that much although you do take some elements of that like that's that's kind of the thing yeah. about the red pill is in i mentioned that there's three sort of belief systems within the red pill but like you can take tenets from all three and i myself like i agree with some of the um tenets of e each of these uh ideologies like of course i think that game does have at least some sort of a place um in in dating like how much not a huge amount nowhere near as much as the pickup artists would say but of course it still is you know maybe 5 10 15 percent of the equation um as for the second group you've got the like status red pillars and these are the guys who think that it's mainly about like building your career your finances um like climbing the ranks the corporate ladder everything like that um and then the final group which i think that you, you probably fall into the most is the like looks red pillars and that's their their main tenets is like focusing on the uh gym like um your your fashion sense and like grooming male like hygiene things like that um and based on just having a like a quick scroll through your channel yeah. i think that you teach a lot of things related to that like you might you might believe uh, a couple of things from the other two uh systems you might like share uh, beliefs about all of them i think that's actually true because you have uh, given a lot of d advice like to do with game and uh, first date advice things like that on your channel as well uh, but like mainly when i look at your channel i'm seeing a lot of um this is how to look good this is looks maxing this is mm. how you can increase your physique and increase your testosterone which i'm guessing is gonna improve your looks from there so do you would you say in the like black pill community or what you think uh, Mr. Waffles, do you think that looks is the most important thing for a man in on his success with women? That's what I wanted to find out from yeah, you. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you, you don't you don't, you don't even need to you don't even need to answer that uh, ask that question to me. It's oh sorry, you said a hundred percent. It's not. I am a hundred percent. The most important. The most. Important. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I was I just wanted to make that quick distinction. I hundred percent believe that looks is the most important, but I don't believe looks is one hundred percent. Like there's a very subtle difference there, which is quite significant. Like, you know, I'd probably say yeah. looks is 60, 70, possibly even 80 or 90% if we're talking about something like online dating, of course. Um, but I don't believe it's 100%, but I 100% believe that it is the most important. Well, do you, do you okay. think the same? Do you think that looks I, is the I most important? I don't know. I oh, okay. Down what you don't. I, what I, I thought my split was this. So let me just find it. So I'd say looks is 25%. Status, wow. um, money and status is thirty percent, and personality and confidence is forty-five percent. That was my. Wow. <laughs> yeah, oh, so we're, we're in for a brawl here different. today. We're in. We're in for a brawl. One hundred percent. Yes. Uh, just tell me why do you think that looks is the most important thing for a guy to have with his success with women? Um, I I actually made a video uh, about this. It was why looks is becoming more and more important. And I, I can't remember how many reasons I had in that. If I just bring it up, then I could... Yeah, bring it up. Yeah. Oh, it was made quite a while ago. Um, was it... The first one, well, obviously, the, the one of them was online dating. Like, that goes without saying. Um, wait, let me find it quickly, just to make sure that I'm on the right track. No, it was sooner than that. It was... Yeah, I've got really definitely have a couple of interesting points when when after you've spoken about why you think it's the most important because yeah there's this huge things i don't agree with about that so i look forward to it well why don't you make your case first um and then while i look for this video because i do want to be very concise with what i'm saying but if you want to make your case first for why you think that looks isn't the most important or why you think what is it? You said personality was 40, 45%. Yeah. I can't remember the number, well, but it was... Personality, charisma, confidence, whatever you want to call it, I, I think it's 45%. And I just okay. I have a few questions for you to try and 
decode why you think looks is is the most important and i wanted to ask you if you've ever had a friend whether it be at university in school that seemed to do well with women that was not attractive um On not any situation, really could always kind of kind of just pull uh even though he was he wasn't very attractive and he didn't seem to have much going for him um no i wouldn't say that's the case it's in fact the only times i would say that has happened um is when i thought a guy was unattractive i thought that a guy wasn't good looking and i was like how on earth is he getting the girls um but i yeah. think but i thought but then later i realized um after i like discovered the black pill and i learned a bit more about looks theory and what actually makes a man attractive is that there's a big difference between the male and female gaze so the, the 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 best example and the guys that I thought shouldn't have been getting the girls, which were, were the so-called like pretty boys or e-boys, you know, the guys with a lot of feminine features, um, you know, they, 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 they're not particularly like big, they're quite skinny, but they're quite tall at the same time and they have a defined jawline um, and, you know, luscious hair, things like that. And that, I mainly experienced that in school. But the reason why I thought that they shouldn't get the girls is because men look at other men with the male gaze they see like oh he's just a skinny guy he shouldn't be getting girls because he's just skinny i could probably beat him up like i could push him over like a piece of cardboard so it'll be easy um for me to out compete him um but obviously these guys were still getting the girls and it was only later when i realized and i learned a bit about looks theory oh it's actually these guys actually were really attractive but i didn't realize that the girls did find them really good looking but i didn't realize that okay Okay, I'll, I'll follow you on that one. Would you say that money and status overpower looks at a certain level? Um, it depends what stage in life you're talking. And wait, did you say money and status overpowers looks? Yeah, at a certain level. Um, well, I've got two sort of points to make on that. Number one, it depends on what stage of life. And number two, it depends on how much money and status and looks we're talking. Like if, if you put, uh, I don't know, Who's who's who would be just? Let's who... go. Let's go. I've, I've got one lined up already. Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, absolute nerd, doesn't look great at all. Yeah, um, yeah, like yeah. okay, yeah, he, he's fair stuff. enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. he's he's got a lot of you know, especially money. I don't know about status, as in you know, like of course he, there's a lot of status that comes with being a CEO, but I wouldn't say mm. that's as much status as say a movie star or a male singer. Like you know, people aren't exactly. Like, in terms of Instagram subscribers, I'm guessing he's only got uh, uh, a million or a few million, which is nowhere near the likes of, say, Justin Bieber, who's got mm. hundreds of millions. Like, obviously, a million uh, Instagram followers is still top 1% status, but he's not... He, I would say he's mainly money, not status, if you know what I mean. As in, he's always going to top Forbes' rich list. He's going to be in the top 10 for them. But in terms of top celebrities, I don't know if he'd even be in the top... 100 for that like that's going to be dominated by movie stars actors um singers who yes do have a sizable sizable amount of money too but they're they mainly shine in terms of status like they're the main people in the public eye do you think that somebody who is attractive would beat mark zuckerberg for a woman's like hand in marriage for example so let's say you've got some kid he's at uni or he's like 25 26 years old he's working a job he makes I don't know, not a lot of money, makes 20 grand a year. And then you've got Zuckerberg that's come in gunning for the same girl. Does that attractive guy even stand a chance in, in any realm? Um, th does the unattractive guy with status and money stand a chance? No, does the unattractive... Yeah, the unattractive guy, does he... D does the attractive guy even stand a chance against Zuckerberg, even though he's ugly? Um, he's if, well, it depends what sort of context that we're talking. Because if we're talking just about, you know, these guys were in a club... The, the, the really attractive guy, the most attractive guy there is going to be able to get women anyway. And yeah, some people might be looking at Mark Zuckerberg in that environment and thinking, wow, he's the richest guy on earth. But are women going to be throwing themselves at him? I'm not too sure. Um, maybe. Or is it, like, is it usually but, but the guy the, with the biggest status and the biggest table at the club that has the girls on it, not the handsome guy who's at uni who's walking through the crowds? I mean, he doesn't even get looked at by half the girls because... They know he doesn't have anything in his pocket. No dough, no status. 
that's what I'm thinking. Okay, that, uh, that's slightly changing the point that we was uh, discussing a little bit. But what I, I saw where you was going with this originally. But the thing I want to say is that yes, like money and status still does have its place in uh, the dating market. Like you know, if somebody's top one percent, or actually I wouldn't even say top one percent because top one percent of money is only like two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand a year. Um, and you know, you're hardly going to be making the rankings for anything um with that amount of money but the main way that that could help you is that it can open doors in other respects you can be financially independent you can like translate that money into status by hosting big parties by looks maxing and so on and so forth but um the the main thing that i have with like money and status is that people underestimate just how much money and status you need in order to translate that into dating success with uh women directly like there's a lot of women nowadays um especially the 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 highest value ones that if you don't have a blue check mark then you're, you're not even um like seen uh in their dms like they, they they won't even look at you and you might you know if you've got 20 30 40 000 subscribe uh instagram uh followers like you, you're probably in the top 10 percent of instagram um that that's clearly a lot of status but if you've not got a blue check mark then how would you even get seen but isn't the blue check mark isn't that just status yeah the blue check, check mark is status but like that's you know so far out of out of reach for most people is in when you look at the you know everyday people who are getting the girls like you know for average joes it is the guys mm. who like it is looks mainly separating them if you know what I mean, I'm saying it's, it's not status that is separating the average people. One one sec, uh, Sam. I just think we've we're struggling to hear you on our side of the stream. The I'm people... just getting James sort out. I've just had a few comments in a row just saying that we can't hear you very well. Um, where's the mouse? There we go. Just give us one sec, guys. We're just gonna have a look into that. James, what's up with it? What's up? No, it's all right. We're all good. Yeah, what what what's what's up with it? What are people saying? No, it's like you almost kind of came it through this over here rather than the actual system. Okay. I haven't got a look online. Any anything going on your end, uh, Sam? Uh, let me just check. Um, everybody's still saying that. My, well, I'm just waiting for the chat to catch up. If if anyone's watching this right now and. The stream is going good. Um, just type in the chat that the stream is fine. Yeah, let us know what's going on and whether you can see us and hear us would be appreciated. I've got one. Uh, I've, I've got something quite interesting we could do right now, just whilst audio is a bit trash, but they can still see us, um, Sam. I have a picture of me when I was at university and I just want you to rate me out of 10 and just let me know like what you think of me when i was at university okay go whether on. you think i was whether i was an like what what you think of my face um well obviously it's a very poorly taken picture um I look you like know it's, you, you look you look like you're very drunk in that photo so just based on the photo alone you know you're about 4.5 but i'm afraid yeah. uh, to say i might have had you I might have beat you to uh, the race on this one because I actually had a look at your Instagram and I scrolled like very, pretty much very to the bottom. And this was, I, I prepared this uh, in preparation because because I saw your um, video, how to go from a three to an eight out of 10. And it was interesting yeah. because at the very start, you use yourself as an example. And I think you might have even used that exact photo to say, look, this is what a three out of 10 look, guy looks like. And now look at me, I'm an eight out of 10. Um, but I found this photo. I'll, I'm not sure if you'd be able to see it on the screen, um, but it was it was the one which yeah, is from 2014. It. If if you got the stream on your phone, because I know you were showing me that earlier, it was like a passport photo or something like that. Um, it was you from 2014. Yeah, yeah, 20, 2014. Yeah. Yeah, and that was like what, that's that's eight years ago now. So I think you said you're 23 years old now. And um, yeah, so if you do the maths on that, 23 minus eight, you were 15 probably then, depending on when your birthday is. And in that photo, you're clearly, you know, not a below average looking guy. Like that at the very least, you're, you're, you're definitely not a five. You're a six in that photo. Um, you, 
you 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 were clearly like above average looking even when you was younger like you know you're 15 years old in in that photo like i i looked way worse when i was 17 years old so you went from you know mm. if you were six back then um and now you know you're you're like probably about a seven now like i'm just looking at um the the comments and they're all in agreement with me on my video they're saying yeah you were a 6.5 then you're a six uh and now you're a 7.5 so you went up so so this is what, what i'm getting at with this like the the major um thing that a lot of red pillars get wrong is that they they underestimate like how much they had to begin with and they think that they went from a three to an eight when realistically um they're going from a like six to a seven or a five to a seven or a five to a six and if you know what i mean just to clarify, I never would have said that I was a three out of ten at any point. That's more like a thumbnail, and I do think other guys can go from a three out of ten to an eight out of ten. I genuinely believe that. Um, oh yeah, that's of course. Why I, that's why I titled it that way. It, it's obviously misleading with the thumbnail. Like this is what I look like before. This is what I look like now. I just wanted to show an improvement in looks. That these things can be improved. And for me, I've been on the self improvement. Maybe you look worse than me at that age. I'd already been working out every day. I'd already started boxing. I'd already read these books. I've been working on myself for a lot longer than I've been on YouTube. I've been working on myself since I was 12, 13 years old. So whether or not like it is actually a looks-based thing is, is to be discussed, I suppose, because it, it, I think it really comes down to how much effort you put in as a guy. Well, I think the point that I was alluding to is that you always had it like you know from, from the start like um you know obviously you have made improvements from where you've came um yeah and you know you've increased your smv from roughly a six to a 7.5 possibly even eight now um you know th that 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 is true um however like you you did have a good starting point to begin with like going like seriously going from a three to an eight assuming that the person is not obese I'm just going to say it's impossible. Like, unless there's some sort of surgical uh, enhancements going on there. But a genuine three, like a literal three out of ten, somebody, say, with um, a recessed jaw, um, who's, like, got a terrible eye area, prey eyes, really close set eyes, eye bags, an upturned nose, um, you know, just, just think of a face that's genuinely, like, got a lot of defects. That guy is never going to make it to an eight. In fact, he's not going to make it to a... Uh, like six let alone a, a four or a five or seven or eight or sorry this is what i think and i think when i say any guy can go out from a three out of ten to an eight out of ten i think it's true because a man is not in my eyes fully based on his look so a man can improve his looks why can a guy who's got a recessed jaw some fucked up eyes or whatever you said why can he not be ripped and in great shape he can Just tell me um why. I, I'm going to see if I can share my screen because I think that this ep epitomizes. Um, yeah, I can share my screen. Screen. All right. Here is it. <laughs> Sam, I just seen that comment. What comment? <laughs> but not. Um, it was Sam Harbinator. He said, "I can see the gears grinding in Jack's head. Something's going on." And it's when I think I, people I telegraph a lot of things on my face. Right. Can Can you see the graph that's on my screen at the moment? I can't see any graphs now. Okay. Is your phone available? Let me just have a look at my phone. I'm going to get up your stream. On yeah, my yeah. Phone. Get get up get up my stream because then you'll be able to see it. Because this, this, like, you know, puts into um, test what I'm saying pretty much perfectly. Like this, this is my own experiment. This is my own data that I've uh, collected. Okay, okay. Um, so everyone who's watching on my end, you've probably already seen this chart shown before. Um, this chart was shown in one of my most popular videos. It's got like over 500,000 views or something now. Um, and okay, it was all of the data that I collected from my... Um... Can you see it now? Okay. I'm just checking if my guys on stream can see the graph. Okay. Just, just put in the chat if you can see the graph, boys. Let's have a look. Can, can you I see, see the graph, Jane? I'm having a look. It's still catching up. Um, no, no one's seen the graph. Okay, okay. so guys, well, this I'll, is the graph. I'll just, oh, you can this show it. Graph. Just you can just show it on your uh, thing, can't you? Yeah. Okay. For yeah, anyone that's fine. who hasn't seen, this is the graph. Okay. Um, 
So now I'm going to explain it. So um, the two lines there is the uh, average averages that I've collected from my own face rating service of um, guys, uh, over a thousand guys, so the sample size is quite big. Um, and it's divided by their body type. So there was guys with an average physique, you know, in fact, I'll bring up uh, what it shows like with a guy with average physique. So can you see what's on the screen now? Uh, I'm still on your stream, but I think okay. I'll, it's it, it will catch up in a second. So um, if for, for the new image that comes onto your screen, you're going to see yeah. like three uh, different physiques. So you, at the top left, you've got a guy who is who I would describe as jacked, okay. like he's, you know, 10% body go. fat or so, um, you know, yeah. large muscles, um, you know, he's clearly like gone to the gym consistently. And then the guy in the middle is what I class as an average physique. Like this is, you know, your 15 to 22% body fat range, um, some muscle, but not a huge amount. And, you know, just average, like most guys, like I, I calculated that 600 out of the thousand guys uh, had this uh, body type. And then the final one, obviously, is somebody who's obese. Um, and there was about 150 uh, of my audience members had that body type. But then 150 were jacked as well. So there was the same amount on either side. But anyway, the point I'm trying to get to, I'll go back to the graph because this is what I actually want to talk about. So the guys who were jacked, clearly, compared to the average guys, their um, you know scores were higher. They were slightly higher. Like there were, you know, if you look at the chart, 30% of um, guys who were jacked were sixes, were above average. Like the hump is clearly above a five. Um, most guys yeah. who were jacked are above a five. Meanwhile, average guys, they are, most of them, you know, obviously average. Uh, most of them are a five. There's some fours and there's some sixes and there's some sevens and even a couple of eights. They're just lucky. They're lucky that they, you know, have naturally good facial genetics. Despite having an average body, they're still highly attractive. But the point, the, the main point is that look at the uh, red zone that I've highlighted, that 14%. Okay. That 14% yes. is all jacked guys who still scored yep. below a five. So it's, this proves, you know, based on if, if yep. it proves based on the fact that if my uh, rating skills are accurate um, and I'm not just lying or making up this data, that... Yeah, some guys can get jacked. A lot of guys will get jacked and it can improve their score quite a lot. In fact, for all guys, it will improve their score. A three who's jacked yeah. is going to be better than a three who's not jacked. However, 14% of jacked guys still end up in that dreaded sub five category, um, you know, because their genetic factors such as their face are uh, pulling them behind. And for those, in my opinion, their body is no, like, you know, makeup for... For, for their like other genetic flaws okay i i understand i understand you on that i i, I understand yeah. you, so, so I just think... to make sure i'm 100 percent clear is in you know i'm all for going for the gym going for the gym will yeah. improve your score but yeah. it might not improve because... your score enough because if you're a 3.5 and you go up to a four through going to the gym you've not really improved your situation. And obviously like you, you yourself kind of follow this chart because in the picture I showed earlier, um, when you was younger, you wasn't jacked. Yeah. You know, you was just a regular skinny dude with an average build. You was around a six, mm. a 6.5. And then since you went to the gym, you've, um, you know, since increased your SMV to a 7.5, possibly even eight. So you've been able to get a one to two point advantage through going to the gym, which, you know, lines up in my chart. You can see the distance between the two humps is roughly one to two points. Um, however, it's not going to be the be all and end all. Like, and if your face is still bad, then, you know, going to the gym, yeah, it's going to help you, but it's not going to save you. In, in my opinion, I would say that it doesn't really matter once you're jacked and you're working towards good things in your life. When, when you have that charisma, when you've achieved things as a man, why does it matter if, if somebody rates you a four or five when you're jacked and you're doing everything you can? Like in my eyes, and I think in most women's eyes, when they give you a chance other than just straight looking at your face, which is way more of relationships than just looking at someone, it doesn't matter anymore if you're, if you're doing everything for you. That's why we can have disabled people that go, and, go on to do amazing things that become Olympians and then become absolute like idols and, and icons among women when they look at them. I don't think it's like, 
I think focusing so much on looks as the be all and end all is is nonsense because for a three out of ten, that guy sitting there watching your channel, he's then thinking, well, what can I do for myself? He he gets to sit there and just think, oh, I get off scot free because I've been given a bad hand. Like I don't agree with that way of thinking. Any man can make his life how he wants it to be. And if you don't feel that way, look at some of the incredible people that have come from complete adversity. No, 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 no. So I think, think you're, I think you're shifting my point a little bit here. I want to repeat, I'm all for going to the gym. And, um, you know, if you are that three out of 10 guy, there is absolutely no reason why you should go to the gym and get in shape. Besides just stating, it's going to have a lot of other benefits for you. It's going to improve your mental health, your physical health. Obviously, that's you know probably the main purpose of going to the gym. It's going to increase your life expectancy. You're going to get more respect. You're going to have increased uh, chance of getting job interviews and passing those interviews. It's going to have a lot of benefits besides just dating. Um, so every single person should be going to the gym. And in fact, as I mentioned earlier, um, I think 15%, yeah, 15 of guys... Um, who follow my channel, who, you know, are included in this data, are jacked, which is way above the average if you look at the, you know, wider population. I don't know the exact figures, but, you know, just walking down the street, nowhere, nowhere near 15% of guys are jacked. It's probably like 2 or 3%. Like, do you know the exact numbers? There's, you know, not that many jacked guys out there, but 15% of people who watch my channel or bought this face rating are jacked like i'm all for going to the gym you know you, you can um you know improve in other areas of life but the main point that i want to drill home is that the data that i'm presenting in my uh, videos isn't pessimism or nihilism it's indicating realism it's realizing yes gym can improve but it's not going to be the be all, be all and end all and take me from a three to an eight that is you know the comment that you made in your video that you can go from a, from a three to an eight um, but I, I don't believe that that's true through going to the gym or doing any of the other uh, looks maxing it, techniques that you mentioned. It's not through just going to the gym. Yeah, of right. course. But that is, I think we can both agree that's the main one. As in, gym is easily 50% of looks maxing, in my opinion. Or at least, you know, uh, like your body fat percentage and your muscle mass. Like all of the other stuff, like hair, your grooming, your beard, that's in the other half. Like the main thing is gym. That's the only thing that, you know, can bump up your score by one to two points like all of the other things combined such as hair skincare beard grooming clothes fashion whatever that's going to be like the extra yeah. like cream on top if you know what i mean like gym is the I, main thing I still, think it's, I still think it's kind of just absolute nonsense though like the whole rating scale like rating yourself that way let's look at someone like pete davidson who's typically not that attractive to a lot of people not in great shape who has status who has a great charisma personality is funny who is to a lot of women a 10 out of 10 and has banged some of the hottest women in the world. But like, how can he go and do that? That's, that's like looks isn't everything. That's all I'm saying is it's definitely not everything. You can absolutely beat looks with other things and you can improve your own looks. I don't think there's any need to put yourself in a box. If you're a three out of 10, I definitely think you can be an eight out of 10. It's just like you can do other things in your life if you want to try. And um, so, so when I you say eight out of 10, are you talking about an eight out of 10 across the board or? Um, an 8 out of 10 in terms of looks? I'd, I'd actually say an 8 out of 10 in terms of looks because someone like Pete Davidson, although he's not like that attractive typically, when he is now considered probably over an 8 out of 10 by a lot of women because of his other like qualities, even, and that then adds to his looks. Like if a guy's rich, he turns up in a Ferrari and he's jacked, but his face is a little bit off. Like that guy's going to look way more attractive to you than a guy that pulls up next to you in some beat up car covered in like crap and stuff he's jack still but he doesn't like attraction is like a mental thing it's not all about like just the way you look so like, you can think someone looks better because of their status um i've just had to look up this guy pete davidson um he's the guy dating ariana grande i believe um he did a while ago then yeah. kim kardashian and how, how attractive would you say he was before i haven't got any before pictures but i don't know what he looked like yeah so called I'll like before some... yeah because i'm just looking at him now the photos that the first ones that come up on google and the first thing that i saw was his jawline and then the second thing that i saw was his eye area which is sub poor but uh, sub part sorry but his jawline is definitely like way above average like he's got a you know very uh well-defined jawline long ramus um straight mandible equal facial fur so his jawline is easily a seven uh, but his eyes are letting him down but Across the board, 
he falls somewhere in that like between 6.5 and 7.5 out of 10 range he's probably just like you know takes average averages around a seven like, he's not a bad looking okay. guy but, but to a lot of women he's now a 10 out of 10 he was voted hottest guy in the world he's he's not a 10 out of 10 there's a million male models that are better looking than him but how can you decide that because you don't judge the marketplace of men women do well yes that is true um but like you know this this these articles that you're bringing up saying that he's the most attractive guy in the world like you know this isn't any like empirical data and there's no like you know otherwise why is this guy pete davidson not a male model like why doesn't he have a career he is he is a male model is he a male model? He's male modelled in Vogue. Like Pete Davidson's huge. He's all over. Like everywhere. It says and he's, a lot of that came. It says on Wikipedia that he's an American comedian and actor. I don't think he built his career no. from being a male model. Like it, it just wouldn't no, happen because he's not. Sorry. He was a he, he he was a comedian first, but he is now in Vogue. He's now considered the most attractive man on the planet, and that comes from charisma, his ability to be funny and charm people, and that is not looks based. Well, when I'm talking about attractiveness, I'm not talking about, um, you know, across the board. I'm talking about mainly just looks. Like, this guy is nowhere near good looking enough to be a male model and to have built a career being solely off being a male model. That's just not going to happen. And yeah, he might be... And why is he? Why why do girls say he's a 10 out of 10? Why is he with Kim Kardashian? Well, obviously, it's not Kim Kardashian. It's Ariana Grande, I thought, isn't it? Um, He's he's, he's with Kim Kardashian now. Oh, okay. Ariana Grande, Kim Kardashian. I think they've broken up now. Um, due to some of Kanye, but yeah, well, yes, yeah, of some course, because he's hot, right. It's, some hot hit. I can explain exactly why. It's because he, he's got a lot of status. Obviously, he's quite wealthy. Um, his face is slight, you know, above average. It's, he's not an ugly guy. Um, he's clearly quite tall. I don't know how tall he is, but he, like just the way that he looks like he's towering over people in some of these photos. He's above average height. I'm guessing he's about six foot at the at the lowest. Um, yeah, so he's he's ticks all of those boxes, doesn't he? I feel like this is getting slightly boring. Just this chat and about this kind of stuff. So just a little interlude. A question I I wanted to ask you was like, what's the kind of aim behind your channel? Why did you start the channel? What is it about for for men? What do you want to show men? Because I know for myself what what I want to do. What I want to understand that from you. Um, what is the goal of my channel? Yeah, like, why did you make it in the first place? Like, what what led you to making a channel? What do you? Well, want I I, I want to I, I want to expose the truth. Um, I want to give guys the most realistic outlook possible when it comes to, um, you know, that like dating and the reasons that they're struggling in dating. You know, I as I, I'll repeat once more. Like, I'm all for guys, uh, going to the gym, building wealth, building status, doing everything they can to improve their dating life. Um, in fact, I actually have a video on my channel titled um, What Should You Do In Your Dating Life? And in this video, I break down a step-by-step like flow, ch- flow chart guide based on uh, your position in life. So if you're a Norby, if you're a normie, you know, average looks guy, you should do these steps. If you're a Chad, you should do these steps. And if you're a sub five, you should do these steps. And mm. there, there's uh, not a single point does it say you should give up, you should you know not date this is you know this is the end of the road for you like this is there's no point at no point does it say that like it's there's a solution for every single person and all of those solutions are optimized so if you're a normie and if you follow the steps you're going to reach a uh like final destination which optimizes your dating life it's gonna uh teach you like this is how you can get the most uh bang for your buck say in your dating life and same goes for if you're a chad or if you're a sub five like that that is the ultimate goal is and i want to expose the truth about um you know what what dating is like in the modern day um and you know how how guys can use that information to their advantage so would you say uh what's your experience been personally like dating girls i saw the video you you had five i think five girlfriends or five girls that you dated yeah Um, yeah not not all of them were girlfriends but um okay what what's your kind of experience with dating like because it sounds like you rate yourself lower than what certainly what i would rate you off of looks like i think you're sort of like a freddie flint off kind of character you could uh, in my opinion like, i don't know how tall you are but with the gym with sorting a few things out like you're generally quite a handsome guy i thought so i'm just trying to wonder like where this sort of view comes from like 
when, when you say where this view it. comes from, it, it sounds like you're portraying it as if as if like I'm filled with negativity and I just want to like you know, this, this is a common misconception that people have about uh, black pill and when they see my channel they like they they hear the fact oh it's black pill so this guy is just a no hope uh give up and everything's like spoiled sort of guy but that's not uh, at all what i'm uh about like i'm very well, optimistic about my dating life that. one thing that made me think that is that you did say that a three out of ten can't go to an eight out of ten and i just think telling that to somebody who considers himself a three out of ten is not a an idealistic use of a channel like why would it not be better no, to tell I, that guy he focuses he can do those things i think that's just being realistic i think um you know there's there's a difference between giving guys false hope which can oftentimes set them up to fail because telling a three out of ten a literal three out of ten that he can go to an eight in fact um this 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 image i wish i brought it up earlier in the debate but it's it's good now so uh, what, just 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 Potter. have a look Stevie at this Potter, um you can't play piano because you're blind you can't play piano because you're blind, Stevie Wonder. Don't don't bother playing. What happens there? Um, I'm I'm not actually too sure. I I know I've heard of Stevie Wonder. I know he's some musician. I didn't know he was blind or anything like that. I'm not sure if he was or if, or what happened with him. Yeah, but he was um, blind. And, and, well, and a lot of people did tell him that he couldn't play the piano, and he decided not to, and he became one of the biggest superstars and best musicians in the world. So. Why would you tell any three out of ten that they can't be an eight out of ten because when someone like Stevie Wonder has become a a world class musician when he can't even see? Because looks is very different from other things in life. So I I'm I'm a little bit more optimistic when it comes to things like money. I think that, you know, even if you're born poor and you're born at the bottom, um, you're born broke, you're raised in a council house in the UK, you can still make it to the top. Like there's been plenty of examples of guys that have done that. I'm pretty sure Alan Sugar was brought up with no money. Um, and I'm pretty sure, who was the other guy? Mike Ashley, the one who owns Sports Direct. He was brought up with no money. And now they've become very successful guys. But looks is very diff different. You can't overcome some genetic ceilings. Like every single guy, when it comes to looks, has a ceiling of how um, high he can put, reach. Someone has put, Stevie Wonder did get a lot of honeys. And that's true. Stevie Wonder <laughs> got a lot of honeys. Which is like, maybe that was a genetic ceiling for him. Or I, I apologise, I can't him. comment on this example because I'm not actually, you know, I'm not hugely educated on who this guy Stevie Wonder is. Um, like, I know his name, I know that he's some big musician, but I don't know what he looks like. I have no clue about what his dating life was like either. But um, what I want to, to, to have an example that we can both kind of relate to, um, I've put up another uh, image on my screen. Um, if you just play the I mean, stream again. Tate? Sorry? Andrew Tate? What about Andrew Tate? I mean, he he wasn't a good-looking guy at all. He when he had glasses and like his face was kind of weird at one point. And and I love Tate. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but Tate when he was ugly was was not a great-looking man. Well, obviously he's got a lot of status, and um, you know he's very tall. I think he's six foot four, um, and he's got a lot of money going for him as well. And he's not exactly ugly yeah. in the face. He's I'd say he's slightly above average in the face. Like that's probably his weakest point. Um, you know, he's bald, his jawline's not the best, it's a little bit recessed, um, but obviously he's got a lot of status, money, that makes up for it, um, and that's why he's in a position that he's in. Um, that was little, yeah, like, that I'm was pretty sure, tight. I'm pretty sure for the, for, for some point in the world, he was the most famous person on earth, like, uh, his Google searches was more searched than Donald Trump, um, so, you know, yeah, he, yeah, he, he, like, yeah. he, he literally was at the top of the top, like, it goes without question, that if you're a top 0.001% status guy you're going to have a lot of women after you but if you're a top 10% status guy your status doesn't amount to anything in your dating life it's, it, it might as well be nothing like uh, having a thousand Instagram followers is no different from having like 500 or a couple hundred like is you, you're just a nobody still but yes but once you in the real, real world it doesn't really matter like I went to uni and spent years watching guys who weren't that attractive get laid just girls wanted to meet decent guys and hang out with them. Like there was guys that weren't good looking at all, didn't look after themselves, who I'd say were kind of bums, but girls still wanted to sleep with them. Girls well, you say that, but I do doubt your, um, I do like, you know, you say that these guys were un unattractive and they were still able to get these women. But I, you know, based on what we've talked about earlier in the discussion, I do like start, I, I am starting to have doubts on how accurate you are in terms of rating male attractiveness uh especially like with regard to the female gaze because if i would say exactly the same to you you you, 
you, you don't rate men very well, well. Well, because if you told, you know, just to say earlier, like if you said that you used to be a three out of 10, it's clearly not the case. Like you were clearly above average looking even when you were young. I never rate myself a three out of 10, just to recap. Well, it, it might, it might've just been to, um, you know, clickbait the thumbnail of the video or something like that. You know, it, that is possible. Um, but based on my experience of rating guys um, and, you know, like I've, I think I've rated several thousand guys on Fiverr, like my main service, which I give to guys. Um, so like I'm pretty sure I'm I'm good at like rating guys' attractiveness. Um, do, you, do you think it would help a guy if you rated him higher than he actually was for his confidence, and that in turn would help? It, his it would help his confidence, but that confidence would soon translate into delusion. Like I think that having a realistic approach is the best um, thing that you can get in terms of a rating, because if you're a five out of ten guy and you're told that you're a 9 out of 10, um, then you're going to start approaching the women that are 8s, 9s, and 10s, which is just going to completely backfire on you because you're approaching women that are way out of your league. Um, meanwhile, if you're a 5 and you're told you're a 5 and you know you're a 5, now you realise, oh, I'm probably best off like approaching the 6s, 5s, and 4s uh, because they're around my level. And it's gonna and then, and then once you are able to succeed with those girls, you know, you learn more about uh, dating and, like, you know, how, like, what sort of attractiveness level you fall in you can improve from there and then you can work up your like your way out uh way up to the sixes and so on if you know what i mean i think guys with balls fortune favors the the bold and i've seen enough guys walking around with super hot women to know that it's not down to looks that guys with charisma can get women and and you're kind of telling them this is what i'm hearing that these guys shouldn't even try with those hot women and i don't think that's true because I don't think you've met enough nice, beautiful women. I've met nice, beautiful women that are happy to talk to a four or five, that are looking for a guy that can make them laugh, that can take them places, that can show them a good life. They're not too bothered about the guy who's super handsome, but he's some... He's I, I, some really, I really don't think that's true. Um, and this, this kind of... like I, I predicted this a year ago in one of my videos that... Um, when I, I'll bring up my example that I have on the screen in a second, okay. but I'll just focus on the point that you're saying now. I predicted this a year ago in one of my videos that whenever people are trying to say, I, I know people who just have unreal charisma and confidence um, and they approach the yeah. hot girls and they get them, whenever they yeah. um, you know, bring up these examples, it always starts off with, I know a guy. Like th Those are the first words. I know a guy. They're, they're the first four words out of their mouth. But when, when it comes to the other things that we were discussing before, like, you know, my um, examples of, like, you need to be genetically good, good looking, like, there are well-known, well-renowned well, well examples of these people being, um, like, successful with women in the public eye. Jeremy Meeks is a brilliant example. Like, he's, you know, a clearly above, av well, well above average looking, like, top 1% looks guy who was a convict and women, like, were swooning over him. They actually released him from jail uh, because women were going that crazy like he got bailed out um you know and he's like you know a a, a, t a testament to the black pill about how genetic looks can uh be a huge success to you as for the people that you know want to talk about going to the gym they've got zits like you know if you looked at his before pictures he was about a like five out of ten or four out of ten and you know he was a world-renowned guy and he picked up a lot of women from going to the gym and as for status, there's guys like Dan Bilzerian. Like, you know, they built a lot of status and they have a successful dating life for that. But when it comes to uh, charisma, uh, you know, confidence, game, whatever you want to call it, there is no examples, not one, unless you can name one, um, who is world, like, renowned and, you know, has been able to pick up, like, loads of women and have the most unbelievable dating life just because of his confidence. Uh, like, as I say, it always starts with, I know a guy. I'll, I'll start with you. I think your your main thing is you are attractive enough to sleep with the hottest women on earth based on Pete Davidson's standards. <laughs> that's that's, that's the nicest any... that's the nicest compliment I've ever received. But thank you very much for that. <laughs> yeah, no uh, only if it was true. Only honest. if it was true. It's it true. I genuinely think you could sleep with the hottest women on earth because you're no like less oh. good looking than Pete Davidson, and he's sleeping with Kim Kardashian, Ariana Grande. We'd all say they're pretty attractive women. The, the thing that makes the difference once you're at that level, and I'd say at your level, is, is what is your charisma and personality like? Are you a singer and piano player like Stevie Wonder? Are you somebody that has that personality that people want to be around? And that is what makes the difference. So I'd no, say like, is... looks really isn't that much of a big thing. Like, and for yourself, I'd say stop thinking about it that way so much because 
once you become that guy with the charisma with the business i mean you've got a big youtube channel there's no reason why you can't use that to see the women that you want to see you don't have to put yourself in a box i don't think this this is this is a little bit ridiculous now like okay i have a average size youtube ch channel but it's like z still zero status like if i'm okay fair enough if i become the next mr beast and i hit 100 million subscribers sometime in the future yes maybe i'll have a lot of status where i can um approach the hottest women in the world but based on my current status and my current looks like say if i saw one of the hottest women in the world at some sort of convention um you know uh photo shoot whatever there is absolutely nothing i could say or do to get her attention as a absolute nobody there is absolutely nothing i can do exactly, and that is exactly why you never will that is exactly why you never will because if you believed it could happen it could happen you you obviously believe that it can't happen and it never will for no, you. no i don't believe it can switch. happen now i don't believe it no, can happen now but happen. but let, let, let me explain this That's like true. Have, have you ever heard of the analogy where they say you you got two options like if you're cutting down a tree you can even you can either sharpen your saw or you can start cutting down the tree straight away with a blunt saw have you ever heard of that analogy before just say that one more time sorry I'll so if you're if you've got if you're tasked with chopping down a tree let's say it's going to take you two three days to cut down you've got a really yeah. blunt saw you've got two options you can either start hacking away yeah. at the tree with this blunt saw or you can sharpen it and then hopefully you so can shorten well, well axe or saw it, it makes no difference yeah. you get the idea so and and you're telling me that if i want to go with the hottest women in the world i just need to approach them you know show up at one of their conventions or slide in their dms on instagram when i've got you know less than a thousand followers and hopefully if i show all of the charisma and the best game in the world then i'll be able to attract them no that is absolutely ridiculous if i instead focus on building my status gym you know i'm not saying it will happen but you know a few years into the future if i acquire enough of status i i, I it's possible i could be a top one percent status guy That's and and then it. yes That's no yeah great. so i'm, I'm not going to approach them right now yeah. but yes if, if i've reached that level or let's say even i approach like top 10 percent status and wealth and looks if i get to that level that's when i'll approach the top 10 percent women like you gotta you know match your ex expectations your, with your approaches what you're thinking in your head, Sam, is that you need something to give you that confidence. You need accolades, something to make you happy enough, confident enough to go and speak to those women. But it's literally a mindset shift and you have no, control of your no, own state. No, Co confidence, is, your confidence is a yes, co product of competence. Confidence is a product of competence. Well. I do agree with that as well, but I've, I've, I've gone past the switch. You, anyone can turn it on. No, because co confidence without like the goods to back it up is delusion. It's not real confidence. It's delusion. Yeah. Like if you're it if you're a guy, until it, true. until it becomes true, it's delusion. That's why they call so many great people delusional before they do anything. You have to be delusional, and then you and then you put the action in. Then you make it happen. Then you prove everybody wrong. And I think having an idea that that you can't do that or you shouldn't do that because you're a, a three out of ten or whatever is it's just crazy like you should go and get the life that you want and there's nothing holding you back looks anything otherwise like there's this, nothing holding men back this sounds like blind optimism like it, it really is um sound it does it does sound like it's getting that way like that the main blind no 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 I, I i think i'm being as realistic as possible like if i'm that you know scary. currently you know, if I if you've said that I'm an above average looking guy, let's say that I'm a top 30% guy at the moment or top 40% guy, I should be approaching at my current, you know, like baseline women who are also in the like top 30%, top 40%. That's how I've been living my dating life at the moment. It's worked out very successful for me. I've been able to get um, women consistently that are on my level, that are looks matched to me. If I tried approaching the hottest women in the world, it would backfire immediately i would come off as delusional the rate of return would be would come crashing down because they would sense that i'm you know not on their level i'm not in their league likewise if i was like to, to be blindly pessimistic that would be for me to drop my standards like let's say i'm going for a dry spell i drop my standards all of the way down to the women at the bottom women who are extremely overweight women who you know i i know that i'm like you know better than and if I went to that way, that would be blind optimism. But I, my, my expectations are in a line with the women that I'm willing to approach and the paths that I'm on in life as a whole. So I'm not being blindly uh, pessimistic. I'm being very realistic. And I think that you're being blindly optimistic. 
If I was being blindly optimistic, then I would say, I would tell people not to go and improve themselves, that like any guy can just go and get a girl. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you should improve yourself along the way, but the idea in your head should be there. You should have the idea that you can reach the top. You can get there. And thinking that you, there's, a, there's a cap for you, that there's a ceiling on your success or your or anything in your life as a man is, is ridiculous because there's not the, there's a thousand different subjects that can prove it that have gone from rock bottom people with no arms and legs that have become famous that have beautiful wife and children okay let me make myself clear when it for some things there isn't a ceiling or there's at least less of a ceiling for other things there is a ceiling on how you how you can um how high you can climb like the most obvious example is something like height like every single person has a ceiling for that and most of those ceilings are realized by the time they're 20 years old yeah. like there's a ceiling yeah. for that and for looks why is why would looks why if you can accept that if you can say yeah to that why would looks be any different if somebody's got certain facial features then why would they be able to reach top one percent for looks when their face is inhibiting themselves from doing so because i don't think looks comes down to entirely like a facial based thing or a body based thing as we said with pete davidson it's a charisma thing like Having no, look, money, looks having encompasses respect. three things. No, charisma is has nothing to do with looks. Looks is a comprised of three things. Does. It's height, face, and body. Like nothing else is to do with your looks. Like charisma and confidence, they're all di different things. You can be a handsome guy who looks ugly based on the way you use your face, based on whether you go around like that all the time compared to being oh, open. No. <laughs> Oh, it's, it sound, uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest, it sounded like you kind of just plucked that one out of thin air. Like you, 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 That was the first time you ever thought about that and you just kind of brought it up out of nowhere. Like That's that's not true. Let, let me ask you something, because this is the opposite side of the coin. This comes from, from women's side. Um, have, you like, have you ever been with a girl that you thought was really hot and then you actually got to know her a little bit and you wanted to bang her at first, but then she disgusted you. But just because of how she was personality wise, charisma wise, totally turned you off like a eight or nine out of 10 that you wanted to bang and then she put you off. Um, no, I haven't because I've not tried to approach any nines or tens. I don't think it's worth it. Actually, no, let me change my mind on that. No, I have tried approaching a couple of times and I was completely blown out of the water. This is when I was blue pilled. This yeah. is when I thought, oh, yeah. I'm just gonna approach the hottest girl that I see because beauty yeah. is in the eye of the beholder. So if I think this girl is hot, then nobody else mm. does and I'm gonna be able to get her. But nope, I quickly yeah. realized that is a stupid way to think. You're better off going for women that you know are, are in and around your level. That is still possible in today's current dating market. How many girls did you approach that way? Like eight or nines? Was it just a couple and you got blown out the water kind of thing? Yeah, like less than, it'd yeah. be a number smaller than what I could count on my hand. Yeah, so you basically are, are judging your whole worldview mm. off of what's happened with one or two girls that were eight or nines out of ten. So now you, you have a low self-esteem. No, that's, no, 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 that's, that's, that's not the case at all. No, 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 no. Is in I... No, it, it was a learning experience for me. I didn't have any low self-esteem issues from that. I wasn't butthurt for weeks and then being like, oh, I can't believe it. This this girl that I've had a crush on for ages has rejected me. What am I going to do with my life? No. I mean, like right now, because you, you're playing at a different level now. You're not approaching those girls anymore. So you've obviously got a feeling in your mind that you are not worthy of speaking to those girls. I don't think it's true because I've approached eights and nines and tens. I've been blown out the water a hundred times, but then I've also had times when i've gone home with the the nine or the ten from the club and i've had times when i've then gone on to have relationships with girls like these so i don't think it's true hmm. yeah I well i just don't think like, like try like, it, not all girls are the same like they're not all bitches trust me like i've met nines and tens that are the sweetest girls ever they really don't mind so much like what a guy looks like because nobody ever approaches them when you have the confidence to go speak to these women they're a little bit taken aback and obviously some of them are some of them will blow you out of the water but that's a risk you've got to be willing to take. Why does that matter if your self-esteem is sky high and you know you're the man? That's you're, how I choose to believe. That's you're talking about, you know, these women that are eights, nines and tens. But like, I don't think you realize that the vast majority of viewers on my channel, they, they, they're they struggling with just the average women. Like they, they, they're, they can't even, um, you know, get any dating success from the women that are like, on their looks level or at least should be on their looks like level like they're having to right now because I, it hurts me that you feel this way about yourself that's who i'm talking to not your views because i personally think you would be holding yourself back in terms of what you've got going for you looks wise to not be approaching those girls if that's what you care about if you care about eight nines and tens i mean you don't have to care about that it's really not that important 
fulfillment comes from other things in your life like building business or building your body or the journey basically it's not it's not all about women anyway but if you I, I do feel like you'd be holding yourself back so i'm talking to you directly do you know how big the gap is between like men and women who are like average in the dating market like at, at the current you know like in 2022 do you know how big the gap is between average guys and average women what, what do you mean by that in terms of like what, what are you sort of talking about well, as in, you know, how how big the difference is in terms of ease of dating life, like how easy an average woman has it compared to how hard uh, an average man has it. I just don't believe in like in thinking that average that men have it hard. Like I believe your hardships are what make you a man. So the harder life is for you, if you're born an ugly guy, good. It's going to make you into a much better man than the guy that's born handsome and rich. Who then ends up unfulfilled because he had no journey so me it's a very little consequence it's like yeah so what it's tough it's meant to be tough so you've got to that that's what my channel's based at is like it is tough out there this is how you improve and you can have anything you want if you try for it that's my that's how i've always felt as a guy you i, I the, the main problem i'm getting with like the things that you're talking about yes like you you, you have you you strike a lot of points when it comes to belief optimism ambition um working hard work ethic striving for your dreams like you score a lot of points in all of those departments but i think you're you're mainly like falling at the barrier of you're, you're conflating ambition with delusion like it's 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 a funny one because like as as i've said like i'm not being blindly pessimistic i'm like i think that i'm coming from a re as realistic of a um like standpoint as possible um like i i've you know had experience in the dating market myself i've um you know looked at all of the data i've read countless studies saying this is like what dating like is like at the moment like i'm sure in in fact i don't even need to say all of those things you can just do a quick yeah, Google, you can do a quick youtube search on uh like tinder experiments i had one on my own channel as in if you look at an average woman the results she gets on tinder compared to an average man you just see the night and day difference that in fact i've even seen one uh which was a below average looks woman a woman who was you know we'd probably rate her about a three or four out of ten in looks and she was getting uh blown up with matches in the first day like i think she got 200 or something like that it might even be more than that meanwhile a guy who i had on my channel who was an above average looks guy he was like six foot four um he was you know slightly above average in the face he had decent status stable job everything like that he got um what is it oh it's, he what is it he, but, but over the course of yeah there is a marketplace that plays exactly to your beliefs basically i don't choose to use those apps because i find it much better to use your charisma and personality to approach a girl but i wouldn't bother going in with the rest of the bunch in the pond flipping through something where a girl can't actually see if she likes you she only knows if she likes you when she sees how you act when she sees what you're like in the flesh like a tinder date might get you one swipe might get you on a date with that girl but when you turn up all handsome but you're you're not the guy she wants you to be or you're not funny you don't make a laugh you're not great on a date you're rude you're just out the door again it's like it's kind of no difference really yeah i'm, I'm a little bit more on the same page as you here like i think that online dating is probably one of the worst things that uh, guys especially average guys can do in fact i have a video coming up um in future that if you're a guy pretty much no matter what position you, you're in you should not uh use online dating e even if you're a chad even if you're a full-on chad like i wouldn't even waste your time with it because um the, the thing with like this, this is the mindset i believe all guys should have and this applies not to just dating but as in it's not just about looking for um things to do that are positive roi it's looking at all of the things that are positive roi and then selecting the best ones so yes um having online dating in your life as a chad that might be able to get you say uh one woman a week like either a day or uh, a casual encounter whatever you know you define um but say if you could do cold approach as that same chad um you you might like end up with three per week which is a lot higher return on investment so like no matter what position you're in in life if you're a chad sub five or normie don't even waste your time with uh online dating there's a million better alternatives and especially if you're a normie like you should be focusing on trying to increase your smv sharpen the saw first and then um you know like 
still you don't want to be bothering cold approach but uh no some or online approach but you want to be sticking to uh uh cold or warm approach they're going to give your highest return on investment i got you i think we kind of agree on that one um just one one second sam if you want to i just need the toilet do you mind if i cut to a break stream and then we'll we'll do a, a last few points and then we'll we'll round things up for these guys yeah yeah um yeah that's, that's completely fine i can read Sorry. through some of these super chats that i've been um yeah neglecting yeah, have a look at them and i've got on mine i think i've got a be right back screen so get ready for another gorilla you you lads here you go yeah. i have got a uh, image that i wanted to show you um when you get back so w once you get back we'll jump straight into that um no problem because no i problem. didn't get an opportunity earlier on in the stream um am i muted now? i can still listen to you okay awesome yeah show me that picture after i come back and james just put me on mute okay listen okay uh for anyone watching the, my stream at the moment um am i muted you're still i'm still listening to you now i'm gonna be i'm gonna take a couple minutes just to read any um, no you're s i'll be reading any uh comments that you're leaving in the live chat so if anyone got any questions or thoughts about the stream so far i'd be happy to answer any questions yes yeah, going awesome What is the rating out of 10 where you begin to get special treatment? I would say the absolute minimum um, of where women will start to treat you well is around a 6.5. But obviously that exponentially increases when you get to 7 and then 8. So women, when they're looking at a 5 out of 10 guy, they feel basically nothing. You just you're, they, they don't get repulsed by you, but they don't feel attraction to you automatically either. But when you're like a 6.5, then... Oh no... Oh. Can it, can anybody hear that? What's the noise that's playing at the moment? Because the fire alarm is going off. Can anyone hear what's the noise? Is it? Oh, we've got two hundred. Is it blaring out the noise? Can can anybody hear the noise? Wait, no, it's gone off now. It's fine. Jesus Christ! Oh, I thought that was going to be worst um, case scenario. Fire alarm going off. Thing is, I reckon a lot of his viewers are the kind of either the people that kind of are so all the people that are like, oh, I've got a jawline, fucking amazing, I've got a fucking jawline. I'm looking at this chat, it's literally a hundred percent all like that. Really? Yeah. Let's go. Okay. You're lucky you just missed. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Sound. Can you hear me? Did we get any super chats? I don't know if a super chat will come. Add reaction, create a PDF. Top chat. Um, Sky Decay, who's just left a comment. If your black pill theory is true, then why haven't you gym max yet? Um, there's actually quite a simple answer for that. So I take um like middle distance running very seriously like i'm very highly ranked in uh, the uk for middle distance running um and if i put on significant muscle yeah. then that would cost me yeah, uh yeah. time so i do plan to gym max in the future yeah. like um i i, I my, my ideal oh. like goal weight will probably be about 85 kilos um i plan to do that when i'm about uh when well, basically when i'm finished with my running career whenever that is uh but i estimate it will be around 24 25 years old and that's when i want to gym max and get a really good physique but as for now i'm just going to be focusing on my running career are you, are you back online jack all right put me in put me in i'm back online i'm back online. okay awesome um yeah Here you missed go. the best part the fire alarm just went off in my house really yeah <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure why sorry you haven't been 
You haven't been lighting fires in there. No, you? I haven't. No, it must be some of the other people. Um, anyway. You haven't, been, you haven't been burning any waffles in there, have you? No, no, unfortunately I didn't. Why are you called Wheat Waffles? Uh, I don't know. That's just the name that I came up with. If, if I started my channel again, I'd probably call it something else. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's get back straight into it. Um, if you bring up the stream again, let me bring or on up. on your phone and then you'll be able to see the image that's on my screen because i think like I, I i love this photo this this might be my favorite photo of all time uh in the blackpill community it? this is this is hilarious this photo i love it can you see it uh i share your screen with me on discord and then everyone will be able to see it on screen oh yeah yeah yep yeah. Have we got that now, James? Is the technology working? Hello. Can you see it? I can see it here. Uh, it's David Laid. There we go. We're in. Yeah. I'm guessing all our guys can see that. Guys, just put in the chat if you can see the current picture that Mr. Waffles has kindly put up for us. Yep. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, so you can see what's on the screen now. Yes, I can yeah. see. Okay, I think so it looks like. So th th this is why it's one of my favorite. It's it's not anyone famous. No, it's just two guys uh, on TikTok. Um, okay. This is why it's my favorite photo because on the these guys like there's two guys, you know both of them are gym max clearly like they're both around ten percent body fat. They both got significant muscle mass. Um, you know, they, they both have like eight out of 10 physiques. However, the guy on the left, um, he is noticing my guys. They're saying they can't see. Okay. The well, they'll be able to see now Ready. because they're looking at your, um, thing. Yeah. So the guy on the left, he's noticeably a lot shorter than the guy on the right. Like, I don't know their exact heights. They didn't say in the video, but the guy on the left, I'm guessing he's about five foot six. Um, meanwhile, the guy on the right is probably about six foot two or six foot uh, one, six foot three, maybe. And the difference there is staggering in itself, just the height difference. And that alone would be enough to, um, you know, mean women would like clearly notice the guy on the right is a lot more attractive. But then when yeah, you look at the faces as well. More attractive and, and taller guys get more girls. Like we all know. No, that, but it's a that, night and day that. difference. That's what I'm saying is in. Um, in, in fact, I cited this, um, you've heard of the 80, 20 rule, right? Haven't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Play, 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 law, I think it is. Yeah. The, um, the top 20% of guys get 80% of the girls. And in this situation, yeah. the guy on the right, he wouldn't get 80%. He would get a hundred percent. Like if there was women swiping on both of these two profiles and they had to pick either one, I would estimate a hundred out of a hundred would pick the guy on the right. You might get one that would pick the one on the left who's yeah. like trolling or maybe two that are trolling. But th this is what I'm trying to showcase is in both of these men, you know, they've optimized their, um, you know, behavioral, um, you know, things, but, things that they can change about their appearance. They both optimize why that. Is that. Why is that really worth showcasing that? That's what I'm trying to get down to is like, why do you think that's worth showing guys that, that might look like the guy who's not as attractive? Like why would, It'd be worth showing him he's not as attractive. Like, why, why would you want to show someone that? Is is the guy on the left, and um, would you say that he's fully right. looks maxed, or you know, uh, basically fully left. looks maxed? Yeah, the guy on the left in the red no, trousers. No, 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 definitely not, not yet, because I don't think he's gone through puberty all the way. I think he's uh, quite a young guy, so he's got a lot of growing to do. And I don't think a guy should really judge his looks till he hits with, about twenty five. With that body, can start how, how can you say he's not gone through pu puberty yet with that physique? That guy is about 16 years old. I don't think he's 16 years old. I've not met any is he guys. 25? Is he, he's is he he's 25? not 25. Those boys are okay, 25. I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase the question. Has he done like at least 80 to 90% of what he can do in terms of looks maxing? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I, I would say yes. Yeah, like, he hasn't got a tan. Starters. He's got no tan and everyone knows you look. Not, not everyone can get a, get a tan. Like He doesn't look That's like he can... And power of belief, I started to my skin started to tan when I come to Thailand. So I was mm. very, very pale for a long time. I never got a tan. 
started to come. Maybe I don't even have a tan now, but I think at least I've got some colour. I'm, I'm not as white as maybe that guy is. Okay, I'll, I'll go one more route. Can the guy on the left ever reach the same uh, attractiveness on the guy on the right? Can he ever get the same appeal from women, um, you know, as the guy on the right? It, it purely looks-based. Purely looks-based. I, I, I don't think he's ever going to be as tall or as handsome as that other guy, but I don't really think that matters because... He could totally beat him in, a, in his own game, like in a load of other th in a load of other ways, which is why I don't think looks are the most important thing. That's, that's yeah, that is it is possible. Like of course, if you know he founded Facebook, yeah. like Mark Zuckerberg, then he yeah, might, yeah, that's, that's you know, it is possible like that he would, uh, you know, end up having I mean, higher overall SMV than the guy on the right. But this is like dream scenario. This is literally talking about one percent of one percent, as in, about. you know, th these two guys. Not everyone can do it, but anyone can do it. That's what one thing I say. Not everyone, because that would be impossible. But anyone, if they if they really try hard enough, can do it. That's what I'm saying. I just don't believe in putting yourself in as not being that guy. Why would you not think you're that guy? I've always felt I'm that guy. I'm just surprised to hear you don't think that about yourself. Why would you not think you're the man? There's no better way to think about yourself. Well, because it's, it's being realistic. As in, the guy on the left could try, try and start up some company um you know some tech company whatever to become a millionaire or a billionaire and you yeah. but you know for, for every single person that tries that a lot of them are going to fail like you know fair enough they can say that they've tried at the end of it but it's only going to work out for that one percent of one percent of mark zuckerberg's who did end up re uh, making it in the end like for these two guys Ooh. like i'll tell you what would happen oh, like in, it, in nine nine out of one percent of one percent that did try that extra bit that believed in themselves that end up being these people don't think for a second that you can't be these people we are the same we are all human beings you have an opportunity to become that man if you want to be so that that's why i don't believe in what you're saying because it's how people believe in themselves that's why people have done great things so i don't believe in realism i don't think it's a good thing to to say to other people i think people should be optimistic for their future because you can make a great life for yourself and I don't want anyone believing that they can't no matter what their circumstances are. I just don't think it serves you. As I was reading the comments um, on some of the comments of my stream as you went for the bathroom break, uh, they were saying just like, it, it was like a meme, like it's often said in the in like my community. It's like, just, just be the top 1% of status and money, bro. Uh, just be like the founder of Facebook, bro. Like, you know, just be... Um, who was that other guy that you mentioned earlier? Uh, I can't remember his name, but just just be that guy, bro. Is in you know just just be at the top of the world. Like I think it's easier yeah, said than you, done. And you guys obviously just think that you can't, or whoever that is commenting just thinks that they can't, and therefore they never will be. I don't think Some that do I don't think things. that they can't, but most of them who even try won't get there. Like for, you know, Mark Zuckerberg was the lucky one. It's called survivorship nobody bias. Should it's called and nobody should try. No, you, you should you should, you should try it. You should try, but it's, you know it's nothing guaranteed. It's about having realistic expe expectations. Like, don't go blindly into thinking, "Oh, I'm going to be the next Mark Zuckerberg because I have some unbelievable idea to start some uh, social media company." For most guys, that's Somebody's not going to happen, and very, that's very few guys. Do it. Somebody does these things, and they're just like you and me, but somebody gets the chance. And and the way I'm speaking is because I've. I could have gone a lot of different routes with my actual lifestyle and my personality and I currently live my dream life when it could have been very very different and I've fought my way there through belief and being told that at times I was delusional so for me it holds heavy because it's something that I've done myself so I've gone from someone that worked a call center nine to five was drinking every day that, that was very unhappy with his life to now being on a platform where I can try and help other young men which was a, a dream of mine and living and earning more money than I've, than I've ever earned like a lot of people said to me that that would never be possible. A lot of people said to focus on smaller things, to just focus on working my way up in that company because I wasn't that guy who could go on YouTube and start an online business. People told me to stay in the UK because they, what's going to happen out in Thailand? Oh, you can't get visas over there. I just believe in optimism because it served me so well because I am now happy because I now live a life that I love to live because I am confident in myself. And there was a time when I wasn't, when my life wasn't good. And it was optimism and it, it was blind faith in myself and my ability to read and continue to learn things that took me to a level that I'm happy with. And I'm, I'm aiming a lot, lot higher. I'm aiming so high that a lot of people would call me delusional now. I'll tell you on the stream right now, I'll be up there with the KSIs, the Logan Pauls of the world. I'll be one of the most famous men in the world inside of five years. I'll say that to you right now. A lot of people say that's delusional. 
now watch me do it. Well, you, you might actually be surprised with what I'm going to say uh, here. And I think a lot of my audience will be surprised with me saying this. But I think we've actually got slightly similar, more similar sort of mindsets than, you know, it's been made out to be in the last uh, like 45 minutes of talking, whatever. Uh, but I think where we differ slightly is that, like, I, I, I do agree with you. You should strive to the, for the best. Like, everyone should strive for the best, but at the same time, prepare for the worst. You shouldn't just be blindly thinking, oh, I'm going to make it. Everyone's going to make it, bro. Like, you know, if if I put in this amount of effort, then, you know, I'm going to eventually make it into the top. No, you sh yes, you should do that. You should try to, um, you know, be the best, like, you know, reach all your goals in dating, in money, in success, uh, you know, whatever you name it. Like, you should always try to do the best you can do to reach the top of your game in those departments but you should at the same time prepare for the worst so like my advice to either of these two guys well particularly the guy on the left is yes he should try to um you know he's already got a top uh five percent physique he's already got that so he's ticked that box but as for what else can he do yeah he, he should start maxing out his money he should start maxing out his uh status career maybe and climb the ranks in there and then you know he should he shouldn't expect that he's going to make that um, at some point in the future, but he should try. He should try to uh, tick those boxes, but he should prepare for what happens if that doesn't happen. If he doesn't make it, which, as I've said earlier, most people won't become the uh, next Mark Zuckerberg. If that if yeah. that's the case scenario, which in most cases it will be the scenario that plays out, then what's he going to do in that situation? Well, the thing is about life is you don't need to be a Zuckerberg and you don't need to be the, the best guy around or, or the super famous guy. Like That's something that I'm interested in. I've always had super high ambitions. But to be a genuinely like a happy guy, this guy might just need to go and get a job that earns him a decent amount or have a, a, a small online business where he's got some freedom. And then he finds himself a decent girl that, that he's happy with, that he finds attractive, that has the qualities of a woman that he wants. And then, bang, he's happy and he has a family. Like That's not too hard for him to achieve. I don't think. Hmm. Yeah, well, if, if if the scenario does play out where he, you know, does as anticipated, just is like a normal guy, has a stable income, like the ni the middle 99%, um, then I think that he should just try to get an average woman or, you know, I think that's even reaching a little bit because, like, he, he really doesn't look that good. Like, he's, he's probably about a 4 SMV at the moment, so he should just try and get someone who's on his level. Sam, you don't like this one's a little bit different because obviously I, I live in Thailand, but you do see, and this is purely a money thing. Most of the time you see old guys with, with super hot girls, eight, nine, ten, super old, wrinkly guys you wouldn't want to be with. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting, but that's not a looks thing. Certainly not. It's a money thing. So if he ends up with a lot of money, there's no reason why he couldn't go somewhere in the world and have an eight, nine, ten girlfriend that, that probably genuinely wants to look after him and care for him and, and loves him because he's such a good provider. You know, you wouldn't actually believe me if I told you this, but you're actually kind of, well, based on the last thing that you just said there, you're actually kind of creeping into the black pill and you're reaching into black pill solutions. It's actually something that's been well renowned in um, like the black pill community. This idea of, it's called C-maxing, where um, if you find dating extremely hard in the West, then you move over to places like Thailand, the Philippines, Myanmar, um, you know, places yeah. like that, it, because it, the dating market is a lot easier there. It's a lot more balanced uh, for average guys yeah. or below average guys. So, okay. um, more women in Thailand, things are cheaper. You got the sunshine. It's a way better quality of life. People are friendlier. Like I would say, find yourself a way to make two, three grand on an online business and get get your ass out here because it's a better way of living. Like I believe in changing your situation if you can. Like there's no need to bum around the UK being depressed, thinking you're a three out of ten when you can come to Thailand and have a great life. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I guess we'll, uh, we'll agree on that one. That's yeah, something I actually agree, agree with. You. Yeah. Um, agree on it. Anyway, man, it's. Uh, do you have any more points that you wanted to bring up? Because I've let, me, I've. let me just see. Let me just see what I've, what else I've got written down. Because there's a few things I just wanted to go to. What's the, what sort of the like aim of your channel now moving forward? It's like, what do you give guys like? Where does the positivity come from for a guy watching your channel? Why should he watch you, Wheat Waffles, compared to me? Or should he watch us kind of both? Did you ask me this question earlier or something similar to this question? I, I asked you what your, why you originally made the oh. channel. Oh, it's, oh, it's similar. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Well, yeah, if I'm honest, if, if you're a young guy, um, you know, they have 
like it's you've given like a slight false dichotomy there actually no you didn't because you did say or should they watch both but if you ask you know should they watch either mine or yours i don't think that's the case obviously they, they can and have the option to watch both and i think they actually should watch both like i think we both bring unique uh things to the table i think i give a very realistic outlook um for guys about what the current dating market is like um and i offer some solutions as well and obviously you bring a lot of advice to the table like i've watched your uh videos on what you should do on a first date things like that i think there's you know some decent advice for guys that are already in the dating game there um and you offer a lot of other advice in terms of starting businesses and things like that so if a guy is young they should probably watch both of our channels i think we're definitely gonna um you know bring them out uh better off than if they never watched our content to begin with um and you know hopefully they'll be able to like progress further in their life do you agree with that do you think that if somebody watches my content well i'm not sure how much of my content you've watched but um you know just based on the conversation we've been for me it seemed to make a big deal out of things i didn't feel were as important which brings me back to the first point well i, I don't think looks for everything like the whole fact that there's a way of calling it like chad's normies and and this kind of like lord of the rings speak is is kind of nuts to me when i've lived a life that was like totally like not really thinking about that sort of stuff um to to bring such a huge example to it and and kind of let people know that looks is number one that that's the main thing for me that would make me not want to watch a channel i'd be like why would i listen to a guy that tells me looks is the main thing if my looks aren't good like it kind of puts someone in a bit of a defeatist mindset i think if they do think that their looks is everything and their looks aren't good like i, I would prefer to maybe watch a channel who who put things down to like confidence and charisma that that would be my main thing hmm yeah that's that's fair enough um i i would say that you know like it's good to know your limitations and good to know like you know that there are genetic things that are potentially holding you back um and then you can focus on like the the things that you can change um i forgot what that phrase is I, I won't be able to remember it so i'm not even gonna attempt to try and bring it up but it was essentially saying that you know you should accept the things that you can't change like try to come to terms with them but then focus and try to make amends for the things that uh you can change and then um you know try to improve those I'm, I'm not sure if i've said that correctly i might have messed it up i wouldn't be surprised I, I if i have what you're saying, like, if you can't change something then there's no need to worry about it and focus on the things that you can change i think that's a good idea uh, what i'd like to say to your guys your followers is that nothing holds you back more than yourself and success is purely determined by what you do and the effort you put in not the hand that you're dealt and there's a million different ways that you can look at that for people that have risen from being an absolute nobody to being the top of the game. So don't think that you're at a disadvantage, even if genetically and in your facial structure and the way that you look, maybe you are at a disadvantage, but that's not a bad thing. So don't don't let it hold you back. Don't let it stop you from going for the things that you want. Uh, Cause I think that journey is what makes you a man. And it's, it's that courage that makes a man and, and makes them happy in the end. Even if you don't end up reaching the top, it's who you become on that journey. So just don't subscribe yourself to something that doesn't make you happy. If you feel you could, you could go for something better. Um, always reach for it that would be my my final word hey thanks for um the the advice to uh my audience um hopefully they take something positive from it um anyway it's been really good getting you on the stream today man um i'm glad that you've reached out to me and uh hamza you know got us like connected up um i, I think it was it's been a really uh, good stream i think there's been a lot of good back and forth um mm. yeah thanks for coming on Hey, I'd agree. It was it was really fun. It's good to have a conversation with someone where you don't agree. I think it's like very common for people in, in the same space as me, like the guys that I've approached previously, to just agree with each other. So I do I, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed talking to you. I think it's been a, a great conversation. And I hope you have increased your own self-confidence and you, you start walking a little bit taller because I genuinely think you've got a, a talent with your YouTube and, and what you're doing. Uh, and your ability to debate and, and your looks as well and i think you could be a great like a great great guy if you whatever you want you could really go and get so yeah that, that is my long-term plan like um Good i'm man. mainly just focusing on building my um wealth and status at the moment well mainly my wealth um and then like in a few years time i'm gonna like be focusing on like improving my looks to as much of a degree impossible as possible like this is all sharpening the saw at the moment but then uh, when I'm in my mid twenties or so, hopefully I want to like, you know, start, you know, focusing more on like cashing in like the SMV, like mm. cashing in the chips. Mm. I just think, um, one thing me and, uh, first man mentioned was our like periods of 
growth and success was after we stopped worrying about achieving the things to give you confidence and just started deciding to be happy with our current situation. So I, I would just, whatever you're thinking, there needs to be a bit of time for you to get to, just start gunning for it now would be, be my main thing because mm. I don't think too much actually changes. I think definitely build all those things, build those things up. But the, the mindset, I reckon you can have it now if you just start thinking a little bit, a little bit brighter. Yeah. Um, what part of UK are you from originally? Just this is I'm a random from, question. I'm from Peterborough. Originally. Peterborough. Oh, that's the. I thought yeah. you was South Coast. Fair enough. I I, um, I lived in Bournemouth for four years, um, when I went to uni. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Fair so enough. I was in. I was at South Coast then, but yeah, originally from Peterborough. What What about yourself? Uh, Essex, South East. Anyway, I should probably wrap up the stream because this is like just personal talk. Like nobody really cares about this. But thanks, um, for, this thanks for coming in. Well. Yeah, for, thanks for uh, tuning in, everyone, guys. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, been awesome. Guys, keep going out there. And